In this video, we're going to break down how to create and use automated workflows on Dub. Now, this is an advanced feature that utilizes all the other features on Dub, so make sure you've watched the other training videos before beginning automation. The first step in building an automation is creating a concept of what you're trying to accomplish. In this video, I'm going to provide an example of a three-day automated email sequence. In your business, there are many different variables that will determine the days and the steps between the emails and activities that will take place in your automations. This is a generic example that is used for a high-frequency touchpoint workflow, meaning we're going to contact them every day, once a day. To begin creating this workflow, it's going to start under automation and emails. In this example, we're creating an email workflow. However, you can also create text message workflows. If you want to create a text message workflow, the following steps would be the same, except for the message would be created in SMS instead of email. Now, this is separate from SMS and emails created under campaigns. So be sure when you're creating emails and SMS messages for automated workflows, this is done under workflows. The first step here is to create the emails that you want to utilize in your steps. In the example I provided, we're going to use a three email sequence. So I'm going to use these three emails here. These are already written and I'm gonna use them in my sequence. In order to create these emails here, it's no different than the emails you created in a campaign. So there's a separate training video walking through the process of how to create an email for a campaign. Once the emails you want to use in your sequence or your text message sequence are created, you are ready to begin creating an automated workflow. Again, the prerequisite to this is having your contacts uploaded to Dub, having your videos created, having your call to action buttons created. These are all prerequisites before beginning an automated sequence. Now, we have detailed video pages with call to action buttons associated with each of these emails. And now we're gonna create a workflow to send these emails out for us automatically. The other prerequisite to using automation is having your own email connected to Dub. So when I go to email here and craft one of these emails, you're gonna see there is a sender option. This is where you will have connected your own Gmail or Outlook or SendGrid or another email provider. So this is another prerequisite to using automations. Now, once all these prerequisites are met and your emails are connected and created, we are ready to create the workflow. Now, in this example, I have already started this, but I'm gonna go through it step by step. The first piece here is just the workflow name. What is this for? The second thing here is the type of workflow. How is this automated sequence of messages triggered? What's the activity that makes this automated sequence start? The most manual of these is tag added. Now, what this means is after this automated workflow is built, when a tag is added to a contact in the Dub CRM, that will trigger this workflow. Tags can be added manually, tags can be added upon import, you can also have tags get added through platforms like Zapier. You also have options for CTA clicked. So if somebody clicks one of your calls to action, this can potentially trigger a workflow. You can also have when a certain video is viewed or when the page for that video is viewed for that to trigger the next activity. In this example, we're going to use tag added. This is the most recommended option for a trigger because you have the most control over it. You can add a tag at any time for any reason. So we're gonna use tag added and we're gonna use includes any of. By choosing includes any of, any of the following tags that are added to a contact in this list will trigger the following workflow we're about to build. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one of our test tags here. So what this means is when a contact gets a test tag added to them, that is gonna trigger the workflow we're building in the next step. This checkbox is also important for the next steps. What this is going to do is it's going to recheck if the contact has this tag or not for each step. And this is important for removing contacts from the workflow automatically. 
So let's save and continue. Now, the first step here, you will see I've added as a delay. This is typical and recommended so that as soon as the contact comes into Dub, or as soon as this tag is added to the contact, there will be a slight delay before the message is sent or before this first step. This is not a required step. However, it is usually recommended to have some sort of delay. So if there is no delay here, this next step will occur automatically. This first official step I have as send the email that we designated there. So send email 14. So I've gone in here, I've selected the email, I've searched for the one that I wanna send, I've selected it. And now that this email is selected here, I can choose from it. And that's what's gonna be sent as this step. Now, there is another delay here. The reason I've added a delay after this is because I want to give the system a chance. I'm going to give it one day to check if a CTA was clicked. So what I've done here is I've added a step, which is the first one was a delay of one day. That was the first step. Then I added an if then statement. The way an if then statement works is it checks, did that contact click a CTA? Did they watch a video or did they use the video reply function? Meaning did they click this reply with video button in order to send you a video? One of those three actions can be used to trigger an if then statement. So in this example that I gave, we said if the person clicked the CTA button, book a time with Darius, if no, if they did not click that book a time button, then it's gonna send them another email with another chance in a different video to convince them to book a time in my calendar. If they did click the button, if they did click book a time with Darius, then it removes the tag. And now this person will no longer get the next emails in this sequence. This is also optional. This is only to show you that you can automatically remove people from a workflow based on their activity. If this person already booked a time in my calendar, I do not need to continue to send them emails. So I'm gonna remove the tag that was the trigger for this workflow. By removing that tag, this will recheck if they have the tag, and because they do not have the tag, it will not continue to operate this workflow for that specific contact. So that's what happens on day one and two. It sends an email, waits one day to see if they checked. This delay is important because if this delay was not here, as soon as the email goes out, it would check, did they watch or not, or did they click or not? And there was no chance for them to do so. So this delay is very important. So this email was sent, it waits one day to see, did they click a booking or not? If they did, remove them from the workflow. If they did not, send them another video email. And we do the same. We wait another day and then check, did they book a time or not? If yes, remove them from the workflow. And if not, send them a third and final email to get them to try to book. Now let's cover some other use cases. Automations can also be used to add tags. So if this person clicked a button or watched a video, we can then also use this to add a tag to that contact. So instead of sending a campaign, we can also add a tag, which can then be used to send a different workflow or send a different campaign, create a deal. Many other activities can happen based on their engagement. We can create a task to follow up with this person, which is a dub task. We can create a deal so that that person is now opted into our deal board. We can also add delays. Sending an internal notification is internal notifications in the system that is not for the recipient. This is just to send you a notification as an email to take some given activity. Removing a tag is how you would remove someone from the workflow. And finally, we've covered sending campaigns. Now, the final step after your workflow is built is to launch your workflow. There is the option here to only trigger this once. So let's say, for example, you want to make sure that people never receive these emails again. If they are a transactional email or a marketing email, this may help determine your decision. Again, if you don't want anyone to see these emails more than twice, meaning if they've gone through your 
email sequence once and you don't want them to see it again, be sure to leave this trigger on so that it won't send to that contact, even if they refilled out the same form or did the same behavior, or if you added the same tag to trigger the workflow. This will make sure they don't get the same emails twice. This step is required to make sure this workflow is turned on. The workflow will need to be turned on in order for the step one to work. So first this workflow would need to be turned on and then any contacts that have this tag added to them after the workflow is turned on will trigger the workflow. If a contact already had this tag when I turned the workflow on, nothing would happen. And there's also an agreement to not spam people and agreement with our terms of service here. Once you have a workflow turned on, you can see the status of your workflow by going to view results. Here you can see the people that are enrolled in your workflow. You can manually stop people in the workflow. You can also change the filter status here to see people specifically in your workflow or which step they're currently at. You can also search for contacts to find where they are in a given workflow. If a contact unsubscribes from your emails, they will automatically not receive more emails from you. Automations also play well with systems like Zapier, where they can be used in conjunction with other systems. Say, for example, a contact watches a dub video. This can be used to update a contact, which then can be used to trigger an activity in Zapier to update another system, or vice versa. A person can become a lead in another system, and that can be used to trigger a workflow inside of Dub to send them an email or send them a text message video using Zapier as well. You can go into an individual contact's reporting and see which workflows they're enrolled in, as well as which videos they've watched. You can also view the results of your campaigns to see who's actively enrolled in the campaign and which steps they're on. Some troubleshooting questions involve these delays. The way the delays work is they will trigger exactly 24 hours from the time that the previous step occurred. If this email was sent at 12 p.m. Pacific, it's going to wait exactly one day and perform the next step at 12 p.m. Pacific the following day. There's not an option currently to skip weekends or put in specific hours that these emails will be sent. So whenever the activities are triggered is when the following steps would occur from those times, including down to the specific minute. You'll also find some tools to navigate the workflow. You can increase the size and zoom in and out here to create a visual workflow however you need to.